What's up, Calvin Gang? All right, we're back with another problem. I already should have written it on the board. This is problem 2.73. 2.73. Okay, so what is this problem asking, of course? Uh, so we are given these three vectors. Uh, I'll have the picture here, too. And it wants us to express each force as a Cartesian uh, vector. So let's just get started with that, first of all. After that, we can find the magnitude and everything. But just breaking it up is going to be a hard part. So let's start with force one, right? Force one, how are we going to do this? So let's just first analyze force one. Force one, let's just see what we think about it. Force one is acting in the xz plane. Basically, it is acting perpendicular to the y-axis, which means that there is no force being acted on the y-axis. So we already know that for force, force one, we break it up, the j is gonna be zero. We know that already. What we're trying to find is the x and the z. So we have this triangle here, of course, right? So let's just try to figure out by this triangle. So let me redraw this triangle in a more flat sense. So the triangle kind of looks like this. We have theta, we have pi, we have three, four. This is the positive x, and this is positive z. So, of course, we know we have cosine that we can use, and we have sine that we can use. So if we're trying to find, um, so we know that when we try to do something, right, we're going, uh, we have the magnitude force, force five. Cosine of theta, let's just start with cosine of theta. This is the easiest way to explain it. Cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so four over five. Now, if we're trying to find, given a random triangle like this 90 Newton triangle, we're gonna attach cosine of theta to it to find the bottom axis. What we can do, if we wanna find force one just in the x direction, all we have to do is take 90 cosine of theta because it's going to give us this bigger triangle, right? It's going to give us just the bottom axis, not the vertical part. But we know that cosine theta is 4 over 5. So if we want to find just the x, it's going to be 90, 4 over 5. What we're finding here, basically, is this 90 Newton force, how much is it pushing just in the x direction? So that this is what that is equal to. So we know that this, 90, 4 over 5, Newtons, of course, because it's a force. Newtons is what's pushing the i hat. Like we said earlier, nothing in the y direction, so zero j hat. And then we go back to what's happening in the z direction. Same thing in the z direction. We know that cosine of theta here is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, three over five. And because we have like triangles, this theta is gonna be equal to this theta. So if we're trying to find just in the z direction, of course we're going to take sine of theta and multiply it by 90. So we know that force in the z direction is equal to 90 sine of theta. Why did I write cosine? Yeah. I just tried writing cosine for everything recently. So this is sine. That's what I meant to write. So of course sine of theta is 3 over 5. We don't even need to find this angle. So force two, for force in the z direction is 90 times 3 over 5. It's 90. 3 over 5. Okay. So that's force 1 broken up into its components. So let's do force 2. Force 2 is the most complicated one we're looking at here. So basically, there's two triangles we want to look at. We want to look at the one in just the xy plane, and then we want to see what happens when we raise it up to the z plane. Force 2. So we know we want to start with 150 newtons. But then we are going to have to lower it to that x z or x y plane to figure out what that is. So of course we're going to look at this triangle here, the sixty degree triangle, and then we know that this is one hundred and fifty. So we're just trying to find what happens in the x y plane, which is this one right here. Leave that x for now. So of course, if we're trying to find that, we know cosine of sixty degrees is equal to adjacent x over one hundred and fifty. So if we're trying to find that, we're going to go 150 cosine of 60 is equal to that. So, but that just gives us what the uh, hypotenuse in this plane is, right? Because then we're given another triangle in here that we have to work with, this 45 degree triangle. So of course we're trying to split it into another axis, right? We're given that this degree is 45, so let's draw that triangle too. It's really kind of complicated to look at, but we know that this is 45. And we know, found that this is equal to 150 
cosine of 60. This is really messy work, I'm sorry guys. So then we're trying to find just what happens in the x direction, which is this one here, x. So that's going to be sine theta. But really, you can use cosine of sine. Sine cosine 45 is the same. So then we know that if we, by a triangle, sine of 45 is equal to opposite over adjacent. So x over 150 cosine of 60. Multiply that over, of course, 150 cosine of 60 sine 45 is equal to just the x direction. Okay, so kind of complicated, I hope. That kind of cleared across to you. But yeah, so that's what it's going to be here. Cosine 60 sine 45. Okay, so now let's see what happens in the y direction. So using the same triangle, right? It's this triangle here that's laying flat in the xy plane. We found out what this is, but we want to know what happens in the y direction. This is y. Just like that. So we know that this is 150 cosine 60, like we found earlier. 150, flatten it down to the xy plane. You get what happens in the xy plane. So then we're trying to look for this y here. So we know that cosine of 45 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse 150 cosine of 60. That's what the hypotenuse is. We just found that. Let's slide over 150 cosine of 60 cosine of 45 is equal to y. So that's what we just found for the j component. 150 newtons cosine of 60 cosine of 45 j. Now what's going to be the z component, right? What's what? How much is this pushing up? Well, we did kind of find that earlier, actually. So again, we're looking at this 60 triangle. We know that this is 60, and we know that the total is 150 newtons. Now we're trying to find this z right here. So cosine is, or not cosine, we're doing sine this time. Sine of 60 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, 150. So if we multiply 150 over 150 degrees times sine, 150 newtons times sine of 60 is equal to the z component. So that is 150 sine of 60 degrees. Okay. Nice. I guess I forgot to do the math on that, but we can just put them all together at the end. Okay, so force three. Force three is the easiest one, right? So let's look at this. Force three, uh, does it act, it's pointing straight up, if you can't tell by my graph, but if you look at the other one I have put on the screen somewhere, I'm sure, it's pointing straight up. There is nothing pushing in the x direction, nothing pushing in the y direction. So it's gonna be zero i plus zero j. There's nothing pushing x, nothing pushing y, it's only going straight up. And of course, because it's going straight up, that means all of the force, all of the 200 newtons is in the, uh, the z direction. There you go. So we have all of our forces now. Um, I guess now is the time I should tell you what those numbers equal. Force one, so 90 times four over five is uh, 72. Plus zero j plus ninety times three or ninety times three over five is fifty four. Okay. Force two. One hundred fifty plus sine sixty sine of forty five. Fifty three newtons i plus fifty three newtons j. Same thing there. Plus one hundred fifty sine. 60 is 130 in the k direction. Don't forget your units. Okay, so we have our three components. So that's part A, nice job. Now we want to determine the magnitude and coordinate direction angles of the resultant force. So the resultant force is what happens when you just add them all together. So simply let's add them all together. So force one, or force resultant is what I meant to say. So we're gonna add them all together. So 72 plus 53 plus zero is equal to 125. Zero plus 53 plus zero is equal to 53. And then 54 plus 130 plus 200 is equal to 384 newtons. Throughout the 
the star and you can do that. Okay, nice. So then we need to find the magnitude of it. Magnitude of force resultant is just you take the square root of each of the each of them squared. So 125 squared plus 53 squared plus 384 squared. So then uh, if you find this, this is just equal to 407 newtons. So that is the total force that is acting on it, and it's acting in some direction. How are we going to find this direction? Well, if we're looking at um, the, the coordinate direction angles, is what we're looking for. So the equation for coordinate direction angles is we know that cosine of alpha, which is the x direction and coordinate angle, is equal to the force in the x direction divided by the force resultant. Mm -hmm. So all we have to do to rearrange this, we're trying to find alpha. Alpha is equal to inverse cosine. If you take the inverse cosine of both sides, it'll get rid of this one, and then it'll be inverse cosine force of x over total force. So first we have these numbers. So this is cosine negative 1 of 125, which is the, the resultant force in the x direction. And then this is the total resultant force, 407. So this is equal to 72.1 degrees. So that's what alpha is. So we can do the same thing for beta. Beta is equal to the inverse cosine of force in the y direction over force resultant. So force in the y direction, we said is 53, divided by 407, which is the total force. Um, what's that going to be? 82.5 degrees. Same thing, gamma. That's the resultant, or that's the angle resultant in the z direction. So inverse cosine negative one of of uh, 384, because that's what it is in the z direction, over the total force, 407. It's going to be 19.5 degrees. So here's alpha, beta, and gamma. We have our total force, and it's broken down. So we have all the things it wants to do. Now it just wants us to uh, graph this resultant force. Uh, so let's do that. How am I going to do this? So we can kind of just free ball it a little bit, but not totally. So we know that uh, basically what these angles are, or how far away they are from the axis. So we know that it's going to be 72 degrees from this axis. It's going to be 82 from this axis. And it's only going to be 19 coming down from this axis. So it's going to be pointing pretty much straight up. Another way we can do this is we can kind of just figure out. We know that it's going to point very high up in the z direction hardly at all in the y direction, and pretty good amount in the x direction. So this line is going to look something like something like this, I'm guessing. And then, so this angle we said here is alpha. Alpha is equal to 71 point, or 72.1 degrees. This line here is beta, said it's 82.5 degrees. And this here is gamma, which we said is 19.5 degrees. So yeah, that's how you solve these kind of problems. Uh, there's kind of a lot of work you have to do, but it's really like the same method for each one of these problems. You just have to kind of learn your sines and cosines. And basically, if you can do that, you can do any one of these problems at all. Everyone, anyone, they're all the same once you know how to do this kind of stuff. So keep practicing. Uh, keep coming back to me if you have any problems. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.